I'm Charles Parker Russell, born May the 26th, 1923. Uh, this was a home birth at uh, 1901 South Wall Street, Joplin, Missouri. I had basic training, as I probably said earlier, at uh, uh, Camp Barkley, Texas. Uh, that uh, facility was near Abilene, Texas. Uh, I was there approximately uh, 29 to 32 months and then uh, sent to uh, Maui and joined the 369th Station Hospital, a group out of New York City. They were, na uh, were National Guard. Uh, in time, I became a dental technician, uh, gaining a rank of, uh, of a T4 technician sergeant of fourth class. I, uh, I spent most of my time working with a surgeon. I uh, did uh, most of the x-rays, and I remember one, one case in particular that uh, it was, uh, I was uh, aroused out of bed about midnight one night, and that we had a uh, we had a dental patient uh, up at the reception, so I went up and brought him down to the dental clinic and checked him, and he had a, a mouthful of bloody gauze, and uh, I made a kind of a quick check of him, and I went down and awakened the, the doctor on duty. And he told me, he said, well, Charlie, he says, uh, I told him what I'd saw. I, he said, well, take x-rays for him, of him, and I'll be right up. <clears throat> well, I seated him in the x-ray and, and uh, removed the gauze, and he has no front teeth. Well, what had happened to him, uh, he was loading bombs in the B-29s, and they were on a sled drawn by cable. The cable hit his snag, snapped up tight, and hit him in the mouth. I took x-rays of him, and I was coming out of there looking at him when the doctor, with these x-rays, when the doctor came out, and I said, well, I sure must have made a mistake here. I said, Look, looks like I took a, boot, a, a group of fingers. No, these teeth were driven up into his sinus. <laughs> we pulled them down, about four or five of them, and wired them in place, <laughs> and sent him, of course, over. And uh, they shipped him out, we never saw him again. But that's one case that I definitely do remember <laughs> very vividly. The, the Colonel, uh, Colonel uh, Schaefer, uh, he was a, a regular army man, uh, and uh, if you uh, a dentist, and if you were his dental assistant, you realized that he would have never made a living uh, as a dentist outside the army because uh, he uh, operated with a very hard hand. Uh, the uh, and uh, he would uh, perhaps uh, drill a tooth, uh, put it in the amalgam, and uh, hand me the tools and say, "Russ, finish him," which meant that you would go into his mouth with a small uh, pick instrument. Uh, to remove any mercury that was in between his teeth or mal or stray amalgam, and the uh, uh, amalgam filling, you would uh, take uh, a a couple of different tools and uh, burnish it to uh, seal it tightly into place. Uh, he uh, was uh, <laughs> quite a character. And uh, he uh, would uh, uh, requisition a vehicle many, many times for just a kind of a tour of the general area. He would go by the 
uh, the one of the bakeries there on the island, uh, operated of course by the army, and he would stop and get a bunch of uh, fresh rolls and uh, instruct the driver to drive back uh, to the dental clinic very rapidly and treat us all at the dental to these uh, fresh rolls. Of course, you ignored the fact that he had kept him warm under his shirt. <laughs> but uh, uh, he, uh, like I say, that he uh, made sure that we had the best of, of equipment available. Our unit was uh, sent to uh, the island of Saipan. Unfortunately, uh, there on the Saipan, uh, we were strafed twice. The first strafing of my Texas buddy, Leroy Carver, and I had just come down the, from dinner, our Thanksgiving dinner, in fact, and we had just received uh, into our workstation. Uh, we was taking off our fatigue coat to put on our white working jackets, and we were standing looking out the side window. And suddenly, we saw pebbles jumping down the road. We were being strafed by the Japanese. He and I had just come down that road less than three or four minutes before. Later on, uh, one an afternoon, I know that I was uh, working in my station, and uh, I happened to be just looking out a window, and. Uh, we were being strafed again. However, this was friendly fire, if you want to call it that. We were in the landing path of the fighter strip that was about a mile away across a section of a, the bay that was about um, a half of a mile of water. <clears throat> the orders was that uh, no craft landed with uh, loaded guns. So they fired them over the water. Well, this pilot may have been new or something like that, or, but uh, he fired too soon and strafed us, and we lost a patient in that one. A man lying in bed, the, window, the bullet came through the window and caught him dead center. That, uh, that, uh, that was a very tragic situation in there. One of the patients that came in, a small, dark-haired, freckle-faced man, uh, for a dental examination, I looked at his the uh, the paperwork that came with him, and uh, uh, his uh, uh, he was from Missouri, and I his name was Fannin, F-A-N-N-E-N. I said, Fannin, I said, where are you? I see you're from Missouri. Where? The man ducks his head, and he says, Tuckeho. Well, Tuckeho. Anyone else would have, well, where in the world is Tuckeho? I says, Tuckeho, Carl Junction switch, Ristine, uh, DuPont switch, Ristine's grocery store, Eagle Pitcher, Joplin, 6th and Main, Joplin, Missouri. Well, he come out of the chair, and who in the age are you? I, I told him I'm Charles Russell from, from uh, Stone's Corner. And his mother had been our custodian at, at the school. And she walked a mile every morning and probably some at night. And we never went to, to school in the coldest day, but what the fires were already built, and the school was warm. I like I say that uh, I liked the uh, 29 days of being three years gone. I left home a civilian and came home in uniform with uh, four, four stripes and a T, which indicated that I was a technician of fourth class. It was uh, an experience, and I have really no regrets.